Now then YouTube, welcome to another video. Now today we're going to be servicing the A6 that I bought recently. So for those of you who don't know, I bought this car for not a lot of money, 700 quid off of uh, Facebook Marketplace. I saw it and I thought, oh, that's the car for me. I've been thinking about getting another daily driver for a while. And you know, I know these cars a little bit, or I, I did have an A4 for a while and you know, I'm quite familiar with them. So I bought the car two weeks ago and I've done nothing but drive it really. I've not, I've not looked at anything. I've not checked the engine oil, I've not done anything. Um, I just, I just thought, oh, we'll, we'll see how this is then. And it's not giving me any problems in the first two weeks, so that's good. No um, warning lights and no, no issues really when driving. Everything seems fine, it seems all good. But what's the first thing you do when you buy a new car? Well, you have to service it, don't you? Oh, you might have noticed I've got my Team Dark Side t-shirt on. Now, there's a bit of a story behind this. Uh, when I went to Cadwell Park, um, it was about a fortnight ago as well, so when I just got the Audi, I went straight down and took the MR2 down on the back of the trailer. Now, through my own ignorance, when I got there, I'd forgotten to take a long sleeve top, which some track day organizers do ask you to use. So I didn't have a long t-shirt to wear. I didn't really want to wear my coat, you know, round track on a hot day. So the Dark Side lads gave me this. If you're not aware, Dark Side's uh, like a diesel tuning place, like a proper mad for the diesels. You know, whatever floats your boat. So the plan for today is, well, I've got a load of bits from Mix Garage for the Audi. Um, let's just, let's just go through. I think that's oil. Mix have a thing with wrapping up um, oils and fluids in, in bags when they put them in cardboard. I guess it's good because then if it, if it leaks, it doesn't leak with everything else, I guess. But it's unique. And this is an exciting one. As well as the service kit, we've also got a new rear wiper motor because the rear wiper motor doesn't work on this. It's a very common thing on Audis of this uh, age and Passats as well. My A4 that I had previously had this where the rear wiper didn't work and I just lived with it for a few years. I thought as soon as we've got a new one and we're making a fresh start, we may as well start with a, a wiper motor that works. So yeah, we've got that to uh, fit as well today. Apart from that, then we've just got service bits, yeah, air filter, oil filter. I've still got a fuel filter as well. From my, uh, from my old A4, which is sat over there somewhere. And I think it should be the same, PD-130. I know there's slightly different engine codes, but um, we'll see if the fuel filter is the same. Hopefully it is, because we may as well change that as well. Uh, I don't know when this car was last serviced. I did get a few books with it, but given the price of the car, I wasn't, wasn't that interested in you know what, what some books said. I thought, we'll get it, you know, servicing a car, when you, when you get it, it's kind of part of buying a car, in my opinion, anyway. When I ordered these bits from Mix, I said, oh, is there anything, you know, anything you've got like you'd like me to put in a video you know because you know you're helping me out with with bits service bits and all that is anything i can do for you and I was, one of the guys come back and said these gloves are right good and i should try them and you might notice i don't always wear gloves sometimes i do wear gloves sometimes i don't but those um disposable gloves they just don't last do they? they don't last and then you end up getting like one black thumb or whatever and it's just it's just shy so sometimes i just can't be asked wearing gloves but these ones are all right so i guess we'll i guess we'll give these a try so thanks to will that mix for the uh, for the gloves. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. Engine mount or gearbox mount. Now the gearbox has got a bit of play. Not the not the gearbox itself, but the gear gear shifter. It was very familiar to the play that I had in my A4, and it was the the mount. There's like it's like a mount that comes just just near the gearbox on these because these are longitudinal engines. Um, so that the, you know the engines in in line. And just where the gearbox sits back, there's a bush that goes, and I think that's it. So we'll try and change that as well, and see if that gives the uh, the shifter a bit more. Um, it just feels a bit a bit saggy at the minute, and when you're coming on and off the power, you can kind of tell that there is definitely a, a, an engine mount worn. So hopefully it's this one. Well, I thought I'd make a start on the rear wiper, so I thought I don't want to get oil oil all over me on that, and then uh, you know I have to do this and get oil all over the inside as well. First problem I've just noticed, so the only reason I know this is because I have to buy one for my A4. This should have a little nozzle here. That goes on the top of there and it should have a little nozzle that fires the uh, the water out into the blade. So not only is the wiper not working, but either someone's removed the nozzle to try and clear it out or something like that, or you know, it's just completely missing. Yeah, that's not good. I had to buy one of them before. Like the, the most fucking, I remember at the time thinking, why am I buying this? Because I had to buy it from Audi as well. Like, why am I buying a little nozzle? And it's because the previous one uh, got got stuck, and uh, now this one ain't even got one. So something else to to get. So I mean, the wiper motor was really easy to get to. Just that bit of trim there, uh, which you know went on the back of here, which is all clips and one screw. It wasn't even a uh, torque screw either. It was a positive drive, um, 
positive head and uh, these were 10 mil bolts so i got i got my uh, t25 primed and ready but i didn't have to use it i reckon this probably need a puller but we might get lucky <laughs> Right, I've put it all back together, so let's see if it works. Oh! I think it went wrong way. Ha! <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's probably not what we wanted. Right, the only thing I could find on Google was the uh, possibility that I might have a left-hand drive version, which I don't think is quite right. But I've come up with a plan. Take that off there. Now the, the wiper was sat in that position, it was resting in that position, but what's to say that was its position, come on man. Maybe it should have been sat here is what I'm getting to. It's kind of hard to do this with a fucking drill between my legs and trying to get this off. Oh, there we go. So you don't need to take anything off. Maybe it's meant to be like that lens, huh? It looks wrong, doesn't it? Pretty sure it should be sat on that side. But who am I to say? Who am I to judge what the uh, Audi engineers Thought was best. I can't remember which side it sat on on my old one, so I think we might just go for this. See if that uh, water thing works. That was trying, wasn't it? That fucking pissed out in boot, was it? Oh. Hmm. Right, I'll finish me fiddling. Ooh, that looks cool, doesn't it? I'll finish me fiddling with this. Put the car on the ramp, and then we'll uh, we'll carry on with our activities. Right, I've got the Audi on the ramp. Uh, we're going to go have a look underneath it uh, together. I've not looked underneath the car yet, so I don't know what we'll find. There's certainly one thing that I know we'll find, which I'm very excited about, because it's one of the main reasons I bought the car. So, uh, but yeah, let's go have a look. Let's see what we find. Okay. This uh, under tray has had a bit of a bad time at some point. back to the front we'll start at the back now Ooh. yeah all this steel looks a bit yeah it's all right you know it's not too bad see a lot of things are crusty but it's just crusty on the top but like nothing's actually like rotted the beam at the back oh you can't even see can you well allow me to fix that problem with using the torches it looks whoa, it looks bad now doesn't it but look at this look at the good stuff what the fuck okay some uh, some kind of contraption going on here this is not the reason I bought the car it was more to do with this but uh, yeah wasn't, wasn't expected to find this yeah. so this car it was a bit of a rush purchase because I said to myself kind of the, the weekend or a couple of days before it went up, if I can find myself a nice A4 or A6 with a PD-130, that's had all the suspension bits done, and I'm gonna buy it. And uh, this one's had all the suspension bits done, and it's got Bilstein B12s on it. Um, so the Audi suspension is pretty trick. It's uh, no McPherson jobby, no, no cheap shite. It's pretty over-engineered, I guess you could say. You've got all these different rounds, it's double, Two wishbones at the top, and like a weird pinch bolt that goes through, and then you, you strut like attaches there. It's proper, um, kind of unique to the car and, and to Audi or to, you know, Passat's as well. For the same era, was using this. I think I think most of these cars are all McPherson front struts now. I don't think any of them run this anymore. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? So yeah, it's front subframe. Yeah, could be better, could be worse. I mean, it's a 17-year-old car, so. A 16 year old car, you know, from Germany. It's good that all these have been replaced as well. I mean, you've got your little purple bushes there in the drop link, so must be something decent there. Eh? Can't see any branding on it though, as in this side. Hmm. All the ball joints though and everything look, looks bang on. Now, the reason that I didn't want to buy a car, an A6, especially an A4 of this era that needed, the suspension doing or had no mention of the suspension being done is that it's a right piss job it's horrible um the bolt at the top was a little pinch bolt that goes through the top arms there that always seizes and uh, it was a nightmare i remember doing the the a4 at uh, stretton and got vinnie's i think it was vinnie that was helping me uh, fred but probably everyone was helping to be honest because it was that much of a, a pig of a job 
but we got the A4 done and I thought I'm never doing that again. So the prophecy was uh, was set, you know, I was, I was gonna, if I found one with, uh, with the suspension bits done, then I was gonna buy it. And this one came up local, cheap, uh, had everything that I wanted, had a tow bar and had a Bilstein B12 kit, which looks in really good condition. It's meant to only be a couple of thousand uh, miles old and I can definitely believe that. I was just on a side note on that, the, the suspension that's on this car, the Bilstein B12 kit, um, I've got a friend who sells that as a, a dealer of it, Tom at Motorworks, and uh, I thought I'd message him one day about six months ago, maybe a year ago, when I had the Volvo, because I wanted him to price me up a kit for the Volvo, a Bilstein kit, and uh, he just thought I was kidding, and that, that never went anywhere. But now I've finally got my, my Bilstein B12 equipped car. Now the arms in the, the Bilstein kit would have easily been the £700 that I paid for it, so... Yeah, that's why that's why i went straight in straight into the deep end obviously missed the volvo a bit but couldn't say no i was a bit of a magpie when i saw this come up for sale managed to find out where this engine mount goes but i've also found out it's not the one i thought it was it's on my old a4 um this is this is the gearbox just here on my old a4 there was like a bush at the back of it and it like what was it no it was underneath it was like like come off a bit of brace here i think <laughs> Um, and then there was like a mount like this sat inside it and when the gearbox felt sloppy I changed that and it, it didn't feel sloppy anymore but I mean I found where this one goes and it's just there so I mean, it's just the side side gearbox mount there's another one there if you've got a transmission jack flaunt it it was a bit of a pain in the ass to get off though and I've probably done more damage to this engine mount by using the trolley jack to squeeze this one out than I have, uh, you know, than I will be saving by, by changing this, because it doesn't even look that bad, does it? <laughs> but, hey -oh. This was a bit twat to get out. Right, I don't matter, it's nearly done. So I'm gonna put the new bush on, and then go back up top. Right, so the car's back down on the ground. What else have we got to do? These gloves are all right, by the way. Will it mix? Kind of forgot they were on there, but just saw them when I went under the camera. <laughs> uh, yeah, not bad. So fuel filter's there, um, our oil filter is there, which I've got a special tool for from when I had my other Audi. Look, you can see why I bought an Audi now, can't you, see? Longitudinal engine as, as well, of course. Um, this one's got an EGR valve on, which my other one didn't have. Uh, I removed that when I first bought the car. But I'm gonna leave it on though, because uh, it was one of those things where I, I always thought, has that actually made it any better or not? I mean, obviously, an EGR valve, if you don't know, it uses the exhaust gas, um, pumps it back through the inlet, some kind of emissions uh, crap. You get it on petrol cars as well now. And uh, yeah, because the air comes out of the exhaust, or the exhaust gas has come out, and you know, they're often full of carbon from cold stars and stuff like that, um, these, these block up, and this is what kills diesels. I mean, there's way more things on diesel engines now that can kill them. Um, the fact that this has just got an EGR valve, it's not got a DPF or, or anything like that, it's just got the one EGR valve. It's, it's quite simple in that regard, and that's why that's why I quite like these. Although the previous one did defeat me, I'm, I'm pretty sure this one will be, be all right for a little bit at least. Now that's what I call an oil filter removal tool. Now, beautiful. Mm. Right, guys, we're all done with the uh, Audi work from today. So we've changed the rear wiper, and we've given it a little mini service, and we've changed that engine mount as well. Will it start? The problem is, I've changed the fuel filter, and uh, I had a lot of problems with my uh, fuel system on my A4 so hopefully uh, disturbing it by changing the fuel filter hasn't uh, you know got like an airlock in it or something like that because it's it's not a common rail diesel but it's it's still quite high pressure diesel and you know, it's quite reliant on having that constant fuel pressure from what I can remember but let's see if it starts we'll see it's not going to be a K20 start <laughs> we've had a diesel start up for a while on here have we now, if I was going to make a prediction, I reckon it's going to start up, run for a little bit, and then uh, cut out again. Come on. So it's running, 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 running. 
running. Still running. Right, so that's the Audi done. It didn't actually cut out, it just kept running. So I guess the, uh, the extra fuel and the fuel filter must have helped it. I was a bit worried because of all the issues that I had in my previous one and then obviously a lot of that led to its demise. But yeah, successful service. Nothing seems to have broken. I didn't, I didn't break much. But yeah, that's my car. That's my new A6, new daily driver. I'm really happy with it. Um, I know a lot of people don't like Audis and you know, judging by the comments uh, on, the, on the previous video when we introduced the Audi, a lot of people still don't like Audis. But, you know, say la vie. A lot of you like Hondas or you'll like one brand and, you know, a lot of other people know there's more to life than that. And, uh, you know, as far as a daily driver goes, I really like Audis. So, shoot me. But if you don't want to shoot me, then join me in the next video. I'll be at Anglesey, which I know was meant to be this video, but, you know, Audi needed some TLC, so. See you then. I've put cover on before anyone starts whinging. Well, it's missing a, missing a cap there, but it's back on. Look, OEM, it's Ken, looking good. Power, turbo, power, turbo. Just realised these gloves are uh, Integra gloves, look, because Integra, you put your hands in them, so it's Integra. Do you get it? No? Oh. <sighs> Tough crowd. Right, I've forgotten to do something. Uh, can you guess, can you guess what it is? When I turn my key, I get a big, whoa, mate, service your car. Hey, excellente. Perfect mileage to reset your trip computer on as well, eh? Just ticked over, just run in. Still, what, 90,000 short of what my A4 was, so hopefully plenty more miles to do in this car. Sound. Oh, it's filthy in here, but look, the, uh, the shift is not moving anymore either, which means that my engine mount for all the pain in the ass that it was, has actually fixed that thing as well. So everything's fixed. <laughs> well, everything that we did today worked, which is which is not often. So I just thought that was worth an extra mention. Goodbye. <laughs>